Hello all, welcome to Robensive Training. It's a continued video for the course Advanced Network Exploitation Expert. Myself, Rikun Sindhwad, and I will be your instructor for this entire journey. I hold over five years of experience in cybersecurity. I'm a red teamer at work. I also do security researcher and hold multiple CVs. Couple of articles are published over Pentest magazine, OSCP, OSW, and OSCP certified from offensive security. The course Advanced Network Exploitation Expert helps you to build core knowledge against network security and penetration testing. It is designed for everyone with the basic understanding for the cybersecurity domain, like basic networking and the basic pen testing things. An example would be anyone with the knowledge of CEH. Post completion of the course, you will able to gain core concept understanding over various topics, perform internal or external penetration testing, perform extensive network assessment, find security misconfiguration within Active Directory environment, able to do privilege escalation over Windows and Linux machines, write automation scripts and many more to go. Please read the description before moving ahead with the course content. So in the last video, we have seen how union method can be used in order to uh, execute your query and in order to use union method, you have to identify column count. And once you know the column count, you can execute your query. So as you can execute your query, you can identify any information that would be possible for your current user. So now we are actually moving towards the RCE part. And that is what this entire series is planned for, getting the remote code execution. So for the RCE, the most important thing here is part of your, uh, or most important uh, point for this to work is the privileges. What are the privileges for your current user and all is very, very, very important in this particular case. In order to identify privileges, we can use uh, initially to understand MySQL console that is connected to that particular system. And remember hyphen P is not for the password, it is for specifying a database. If I don't specify any database next to this hyphen P, I won't get any as such. That being said, let's just uh, check where we can find the privileges for the current user. So just typing select star from mysql.user, mysql is a database name, user is what the table name that you can specify and let's hit enter. It results so many things, right? It totally results so many things, out of which there are some privileges like select prev, insert prev, update prev, delete prev, create prev and so on so on. And different privileges works differently. In order to get a remote code execution on a particular uh, web application where the SQL injection is vulnerable, you will require one privileges out of it. And that is nothing but the file script. So instead of getting all the privileges, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just search for or select for file privileges from mysql.user. And here it results different uh, users with a particular column but along with file privileges i want some more information like the user so let's add that to it will be something like select user and a file privilege from mysql.user and here what we get it says root user has the file privilege user has the file privileges those are the different root user from the different hosts what do I what what do I mean by do different host? Is that the first one is for the local host. The second one is Bebop. So let me add that to here just for understanding. Host. Here we go. So whenever someone connect a root account from the local host, it will gonna be having the file permission. When someone with the host name as a Bbox, that is again the local host, connect to root account, then it will gonna have a file permission. However, when someone try to connect with empty account, then it will not gonna have someone 
from this percentage sign that means anything that is a wildcard here if anyone over the internet try to connect with the particular user account that is root then they will also gonna have this particular permission so y means yes and n means no now in order to identify whether or not you have this particular file permission through the vulnerable parameter of sql injection we can do find it with some design query so what i'm gonna do uh, we have already uh, mentioned here every steps each and every steps till the time you get this injection points and once you have the injection point you can uh, just use this particular query that will going to identify the file permission and uh, file permission is what you it what will gonna do it will gonna allow you to have read and write access to the file permission uh, or the file system not the file permission so let's uh, put it here so i'll gonna use uh, let's say the second column that is uh, what here let me change it to very first the initial stage where we just entered one two three four five six seven here we go and i'll change this second value with the particular query i just hit enter uh, there are some error i need to identify what's the error this time okay there is a spacing issue substring index everything seems to be fine let's hit enter and here we go this returns a particular output saying why and what this query does this query is pretty much easy it will gonna select file privilege from mysql.user where user is output of a particular query and that is current user so let's uh, give it a try to understand this entire query with our console there is an error with the copy let's paste it now here we go perfect i'll just uh, copy few things and that will be easier <clears throat> all right that would be fine for now and let's give it a try to execute this what it results so if I execute this from my MySQL console, of course I'll require not to copy the last bracket because it's not part possibly. Uh huh. Adding a semicolon result this Y as expected. Now what this exactly does is it will gonna select the let's say file privilege from MySQL user that the one we already seen where with the condition user equals to this particular function so let's understand what that particular function will gonna do so it will going to execute current user now let's see what the current user displays so if i add this current user and along with let's say select let's see what we gonna get it says root at the rate whatever the host name you are connected perfect so it results something right it result your current username and you want to identify whether your current user has this file privilege or not if it returns uh, this particular value along with uh, some additional information the substring function the substring index function will going to divide it with n percent and with the n n percent uh, it will gonna take the first value and it will limit with just a single output so if there is there are more user with the particular name root that we have already observed here then it will gonna limit with just a particular single so it will gonna get uh, just a single output saying that why perfect we have this nice and decent output so if we change it little bit let's say i want uh, also host comma i also want to know about uh, user and along with that i want the file privileges here we go we get that information out of it this is important to know and once you know that file privileges are part of your current scope or current uh, application then you are good you can use functions like select load underscore file 
and you can load any file from the system that is readable. So slash etc slash passwd is one of the easiest file and accessible for every user in your Linux operating system and that will gonna be work. Perfect. As you see, we can get this output right here. The similarly, as this particular injection point returns this Y value, we can use this injection point, we can add the load underscore file function in order to load a particular file. And with the load file, let's try to load slash etc slash passwd and let's hit enter. Perfect, we can, we are able to read internal files. And that's the part of our RCE concept. So for the RCE, the most important thing here is privileges. Once you know that you have the privileges, the next thing you need to know is you should have permissions as well. Privileges are related to MySQL. And the permission is for the file accessibility. Like whether your current user can access that file or not. For example, a slash etc slash passwd is the file which is accessible for everyone. Like that. Now, once you know that you can read some file, you can give it a try. The next thing would be to write the file. Now, what file to be written? That is important. As we can read any file from internal, there would be possibility to write the file ex as well. And as you know, or you might know, that my application, this web application is hosted on PHP. Means if I put any file with .php extension where the web application is hosted on, or let's say it will gonna be slash where slash dub 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 slash html it would be it it will gonna have a different location of course if i put any file with the dot php extension it will gonna be executed right so if i just create a file with my own content and if i drop it there then i'll gonna get the execution of that particular php file and that is what the next case here we will going to write a file using another function that is dump underscore file or it's a dump file not a dump underscore file however there are other alternatives like out file but there is there are some limitation with the out file so i'm not going to include that out file here but the dump file would be the best practice in order to work with the dump file you have to be aware that your folder where your web application is hosted on is writable means you can write into it you might find some folder uh, within the application like uploads or temp images or anything similar that usually gives everyone to have access or a log. Let's say log would be easily accessible for everyone or they might able to write into it. In order to find and identify that particular path, you have to try an error. So it's like you give it a try with different things and you get the response back like that. So. That's being said, let's give it a try with this particular case here. So what I'm gonna do, it will gonna be union select again one, two, three, three, four, five, six, and seven minus minus with additional plus. I'll change this particular second column with the value let's say select and I'll just gonna add or let's just make it something please subscribe union select one this will gonna contain this particular value and at the end or even i can include it here no problem with that but instead of that i'll gonna add it at the end saying that let's say uh, into dump file so i'm saying that hey i want you to select value for one first column second column third column fourth five six ten seven column second column will going to have this particular value i want that to be into a dump file and the dump file would be slash where slash www slash html slash whatever your folder is so what i assume based on this information i have a folder name bvap so let's give it a 
try to specify that BWAP all along. So I specified that BWAP slash, let's make it a file name, mm -hmm, robbensu.php, right? Perfect. So now as my query is ready, I'll just copy it out. I'll paste it here along with the apostrophe, remember, and hit enter. It says there are some error. There is, there is some, some sort of error. It could be any. However, it is expected. So if you reload the same page, same query, if you get something, the file is already exist, means you have successfully written your file. I guess you have an error SQL manual corresponding server version. There are some query error I need to identify. Let's give it a try. Select, please subscribe. That's fair. Into dump file. Ah, oh, I didn't specify the apostrophes because there is a file path and file path always has to be within the quotes. Single quotes or double quotes, it could be any. So let's give it a try one more time. I'll leave the single quote, removed everything, pasted, and just an additional space next to that. It says cannot write to this particular folder. Maybe the file is not writable or something is wrong. Let's try to reload one more time. It says cannot write to this particular folder. Possible there that this location is not the accurate. This is not the right location which is being used. And you might have to identify the right path. How to identify the right path? There could be n number of uh, possibilities. The easiest way here, this is what I expected to be having an error. The easiest would be to show or read config file, right? Where the log config file I'll want to find. So that is something dependent on the server. So here, what I'm aware, I'm using Apache. Apache usually use this where www and HTML folder. However, for me, it will gonna be a different, or it is different actually. So let's try to read config file for Apache. And in order to know where this Apache config file is, you can just Google about. Or the e another idea would be to search for file inclusion and file inclusion with the payload, all the things. Payload all the things has list of files for file inclusion, out of which you can read multiple files. And by reading those files, it makes everything easy. It's loading, little slow, no problem. We can wait. It's loading. Perfect. So now if you go to this intruder, and you will find all the different files like Windows files, Linux files. If your web application hosted on Windows, go for Windows. If it is Linux and click on this Linux files. So as you see, you can give it a try to put your uh, list in the intruder and send and try to read all the files out of which you will find Apache config file as well. So here's one of the example, http.conf, apache2.conf. You can give it a try to read those files. And reading files, I have already explained, it's very easy. You just have to select your in uh, injection point. Let me move back. And instead of this etc passwd, I'll just supply that particular path. If that path exists, it will gonna return that entire config. And you can read that entire config identify where exactly your location is. So it is something you can also give it a try with control U. So you will get a better version of it. So it just tells you that, hey, where my current uh, user, whether it tells or not, we need to check. So let's give it a try to find. Ta -da 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 -da. ETC Apache, not here, scrolling down. Yeah, it also includes something like sites enabled and all out of from which we can also identify 
So we need to identify all the different files that would gonna have this particular information. So it's not something a one go. You need to identify where my exactly folders are related to my hosting. So if I search for let's say slash where slash dub dub dub, no, there is no as such. So I'll gonna exclude this. Try to go with the different pale uh, different things. Uh, for example, this site enable default or this httpd.conf. This is also also something uh, you should worth giving it a try. Here we go. Scrolling down, there is no output means this file is not present or not accessible. Scrolling down, if we find anything else. We can also try to read log files and log file may contain this information. Let's try to read this file, ports.conf. If this discloses information about the directory where web application is hosted on, no, the file doesn't seem to be present because we don't get any response back. Okay, you can give it a try to actually play around. Ah, oh, here we go. We get that now. Where www.bwap and admin. We get some information that tells that, yeah, there, this is where my location is hosted on. It also tells me this where and www is where my application is hosted on. I'm aware that bwap is a folder and I got this particular path by reading one of the files. And this is the best practice to go with. Try to load every file, understand, try to identify sensitive files and sensitive files can be used for the further things. And now as I re I am able to, or I'm aware with this particular thing where my host web application is hosted, I'll just remove this data, paste that particular path and we are good to go. Oh, this, there is an additional folder, I'll remove that. As the Robensive would be already present there, I'll remove this one. Uh, I'll remove that or rename that particular file. And let's give it a try. I'll copy it out. Replace with the existing values. Seems fine. It get me one error, but if I just reload that, it says it's already exist. So whenever you create a file, you get an error. Eventually your data would be already written. So just reload the existing thing and you will gonna get your result back saying that, hey, this file is already exist. You cannot replace existing file. That is also important thing. With this particular command, you can never ex replace any file that is already exist, okay? That's being said, as it says that, yeah, there is a file already been written. Let's try to access that. Bwap slash robbensu1.php and let's hit enter. Here we go. We get that please subscribe right there. Perfect. It works. I'm able to write my file and we can just write a uh, sample text instead of uh, uh, any malicious for the initial stage. Once I'm able to write, we can just copy something like uh, the one line shell. This is where my one line shell has been written. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you that as well. PHP one line shell, the search over the Google, you'll find this from a particular website, Robinson. It's the easiest one and simplified. This is what you can copy. What it will gonna do, it will echo whatever the output of this particular function. And this particular function will going to get the value of, let's say CMD, whatever you supply with the get method CMD, it will gonna use it and execute with the shell exec. And shell exec will going to execute that entire code and it will append a particular data that is this much. If you don't want that, just remove it. It's totally optional and not required at all. What I'm gonna do, I'll copy it out. I'll go back here. Here I have encoded in a hex format. That is another way to supply. However, you can just simplify this with this particular data. So what it will gonna do, it will select this particular data and it will put it inside another file, let's say robensu shell.php. 
I'll hit enter. It says there is an error, but if I try to access this particular Robinsu shell.php, it works. It doesn't display anything any, anything here uh, at the place of number value 2. However, if I supply cmd equals to who am I, you will find that execution right there. So you can reproduce the existing steps that I have mentioned there by navigating to this entire blog. And you can automate that particular thing that I might going to showcase in the next session through the SQL map. So SQL map is also something that will automatically do this type of task. So that's it. That's all. And that is all what I have planned. If you have any queries, questions, you do let me know in the comment. And if you liked it, please do share it with your friends, colleagues, or you think someone would gonna require to understand SQL injection thoroughly. So yeah, that's all. That's it. And see you next time. Mm -hmm.